Hey guys, today I am going to be taking a quick look at the Ubuntu desktop. Now this is the second and final beta before the 17.04 release. This is one of their point releases, so it's not one of their major releases like you would see in their 16.04 release or what will become the 18.04 release. Those are bigger, more uh, sort of mission critical, suitable distributions. This, These are often the distributions where you might see Ubuntu and Canonical try something a little bit new. However, with 17.04 it does look like for the most part they're going to be just keeping uh, along the um, the usual lines of, um, of of what they're working on right now. They don't seem to be particularly drastic innovations but it has been a while since I took a look at the Unity desktop specifically so I thought I might take a look at the latest beta of Ubuntu and just see where they are with it. So uh, one of the things I do like about the Unity desktop right off the bat and I, I wish more desktop environments did this is they adjusted some of the colors depending on the background. I think this suits really well. It's a really superficial thing and yeah not all um, desktop environments need to do it but for something that for, for a distribution like most people who are picking up Linux for the first time are gonna go straight into uh, Ubuntu. It's the most well-known, it's the one that people tend to pick up, and whenever I've seen uh, Linux at all in the wild, it's 99 times out of 100 the Ubuntu Unity desktop. So it is uh, It is worth looking at, and it is, um, it is worth taking into account some of the aesthetics, because there are a lot of people that are going to be looking at, uh, at Linux for the first time, and these are the things that do clock in a first impression to new users. I know that those of you that watch this channel probably don't consider that to be in any way really important, and it's certainly not a critical component, but if anything contributes to a good first impression for any Linux distribution, I tend to be in favor of it, and I tend to be pretty enthusiastically in favor of it. I like it when Linux leaves a good first impression, even if that's a superficial one, or if that's one that's, that's technical or on a deeper level. Whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm always quite uh, quite in favor of that. Because there'll be people that look at a Linux distribution on someone else's computer, they'll they'll clock it, and they'll you know, put that bit of information to the back of their head and carry on about their day and carry on about their life. And what you've then done is just is just left a, a positive impression on someone that wouldn't otherwise, you know, acknowledge Linux at all. So it's certainly a lot better than a negative one, nevertheless. So so Ubuntu, yeah, it, since it is the first port to call for many people exploring Linux, um, I do think that it is worth coming back to this uh, from time to time. So I have noticed, so you you press the Windows key or the Meta key or that key next to Control if you want to pull up the menu. In, very similar to how the GNOME desktop does it, and then you can actually start typing. So as you can see here, I've installed a few software, a uh, few pieces of software. Uh, Steam is now available in the Ubuntu Software Center. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily the case for previous releases. It hasn't been, for, you know, it was one of the things I did really. Um, criticize Ubuntu for was was that it didn't put it in there particularly early and sometimes you did have to go directly to the, the Steam website to get it in. It's also got OBS, um, however it doesn't appear to be a particularly new version. It says here that it's 0 0.01 um, which I don't necessarily know if if you know um, if that's necessarily true because that's a particularly old version if, if that is the case. Maybe it's 0 0.01 like the first out of beta release if it were, I don't know. But uh, it does come with OBS now in the standard repositories as uh, also simple screen recorder and those are two things that I really wanted to see in the uh, Ubuntu distribution for quite some time. Uh, I do seem to remember there being a time when OBS was in there but simple screen recorder wasn't but nevertheless they're both there now. I like simple screen recorder if I just want a, a quick and easy uh, sort of fraps type of thing. Those of you that used to record gaming footage on Windows will know what fraps is. Um, and again, it's it's a good it's a good um, product when you move across to Linux. And OBS is great, very full featured, absolutely fantastic for live streaming and recording. It is a, it is um, if you want to do just a quick record, a quick video, or even like record a GIF, it might be a bit overpowered for something like that. But um, but there you go. And it comes with of course uh, various GNOME tools as well. So this is gedit. Now, if I look at the release notes here. Um, and those oh, it's listed the official flavors there. So I was reading that down through the release notes, and you can see um, so it's supported for nine months. So if you want sort of longer support than that, or if you want a distribution where you don't have to upgrade every 
realistically every six months at this point, then um, you'll you'll want a long-term support release. The latest, of course, is 16.04, in which case you can then use that for, for upwards of three years without actually having to reinstall. This is, to me, these six-month releases are the... You might even call them the sort of the golden average between the benefits of rolling releases and the stability of long-term support releases. You know, this is like, well, you get reasonably new software, but but it is, you know, it can be up to six months old when you get it. So, uh, but it, but it, the the upgrade process, you know, occasionally with rolling releases, you do get some kind of versioning mis- mismatch, mis- mismatch. And um, and it's you know for 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 veteran users it's je- it's not a problem to fix but for for people that that you know aren't necessarily keen on the latest and greatest software or the people that want stability or whatever then um, then then there are certain problems you don't have to deal with 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 schedule releases or with point releases so. Um, and again, that change, you know, that like obviously there there is like some distributions do rolling releases well or better than others, and then some distributions obviously do point releases better than others as well. So it's certainly not a blanket statement. But for QA, I would imagine point releases to be a little bit easier because then you know all the software locking together, you know how the software locks together. Whereas with a rolling release, you basically have to rely on. Uh, package maintainers and, and standards and, and all that kind of stuff to, to keep everything going. So there are a lot here uh, that is um, that's upgrading from 1610. New features. So um, they, the, the big one is that they're using a swap file instead of a swap partition. I suppose this is their big innovation in a point release before they um, open it up into a long-term support release. I personally don't really know enough about this to to weigh in on it one way or the other. It does seem like there are benefits to a swap file on the basis that it makes partitioning easier. But if I would just to say off the top of my head, you, there might be a performance issue. However, that being that being said, I mean, if if you've got upwards of sixteen gig of RAM, do you need swap at this stage? And if so, how much swap do you need? Do you need you know? Do you need like twenty gig of swap then? If that's the case, um, it seems it seems that swap you know might not necessarily be as important as it used to be, and therefore a swap file can deal with with maybe you know occasional requirements to to break into swap if your if your memory runs out or what have you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's, it seems on the surface like a like a smart move. I. I'm sure there are like two sides to this story, and I'm sure there are people that um, that would like the the good old swap partition uh, format. Uh, and then it comes with the yeah the four the four, uh, the four ten kernel uh, driverless printing uh, again. That's not something I'm particularly familiar with. My printer is like well over ten years old, probably going on fifteen. Nice little laser printer. Don't you know? It, it it's been uh, it's been going well. So. Ah, and LibreOffice has been upgraded to 5.3, which, if I am not mistaken, means that... Okay, so yes, I did manage to find out uh, how to do the ribbon bar. Uh, Basically, it's a little bit more complex because uh, you need to go into the LibreOffice options, uh, you need to go into advanced and you need to select enable experimental features may be unstable, and then it gives you an option uh, in the view menu uh, to have the what's called the notebook toolbar or the ribbon and um, this is it um, so I don't know how stable it is I've just popped it on and it is of course in a virtual machine in a beta version of Ubuntu here it seems all right I mean I think I would need to use it a bit more regularly and I'm not a big uh, word process user. Um, so you know, I mean, to be honest, I'm just as happy, you know, pulling o- uh, pulling open a, a you know a G edit window and, and getting to work on that more often than not. So you know, uh, uh, this isn't necessarily my wheelhouse. I, I think it could look quite good. I think it could be quite neat. Um, it's nice to have a good spread of options of what you've got there. It would have been interesting if there was an option to have it down the left-hand side, so you don't have to cut into so much screen real estate. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it it looks good to me. It looks good to me. So anyway, we can get out of uh, LibreOffice now. 
So it has been updated to 5.3, but it does need, um, you do need to go into the advanced features and enable uh, the experimental features in order to uh, get that ribbon toolbar. Okay, so a few more things, um, just going into the menu. Uh, and I, I do like when distributions have like a recently used programs uh, here as well, uh, especially when it comes out the menu. I think this is really designed to be like Ubuntu's default or secondary menu. The primary menu, of course, being the favorites down the left-hand side here. And then if you want uh, you know, another choice of software, you can go and these, this is like your most recently used applications. And then you can go down for a full spread of applications down here which if you just want it all all at once, which is a little bit overwhelming. So it certainly seems like it's designed very much to gear you towards typing in what you want. This is great for some users and this is pretty terrible for other users. Like if you know what you want and it's just a matter of finding it, search is fine. Like the search is pretty good. So if I wanted to find the uh, Unity Tweak tool, I could just type in Unity, I could type in Tweak. Could I even get away with typing in something like Settings? No, so it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't type in. It doesn't deal with settings. But I'm sure if I typed in tool, yeah, Unity tweet. Um, so there's that. Uh, I do quite like the search. Um, but then again, you know, this is something that GNOME have done as well. So uh, KeyPass X2, uh, a recent one. As you can see there, it looks pretty good in um, in the uh, in the default Unity theme there, which is quite good. Uh, the menus as well, actually, I'll, put, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the menus. So the menus here, they have like the menu bar and you have to sort of basically keep going up to the top left hand side of the screen here. No matter what the program is, if it's, if it's maximized, it's not necessarily a big issue. But if you've got a program that isn't maximized, uh, maybe on like a second monitor or something, and then you want to use the farm menu, you have to then move your mouse all the way up there. That's, that's a lot of mouse moving for just a bit of a menu. Now what you can do in the unity tweak tool and you have to install the unity tweak tool additionally like after so once you've set up your desktop you do need to install this as an, an additional program and it gives you a fair number of choices like for example you could put the uh the the the, the bar there uh, at the bottom again like on widescreen monitors to me this this doesn't really make much sense especially considering that more and more websites are being designed for mobiles now and people generally surf um the the web on their mobiles in their vertical window so it does kind of make a bit of sense to start eating away at the the sides of the screen rather than the top and bottom because more and more interfaces being designed for narrow monitors which is which is interesting. It's 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 a bit of a, a swing back from when uh, more and more stuff seemed to be focusing on widescreen monitors. But I guess that's that's the tech industry for you. So there's a lot of stuff in the Unity um, tool here, uh, but it's the menu that I want, isn't it? So after a bit of looking around, I actually managed to find the menu options in the appearance settings in the control panel. Um, and then it is under behavior and then so instead of having the menu bar in the top left hand corner of the screen all of the time you can have it in the windows title bar so you can hover over there and then you can and it works in, in a bit more of a simple simple way there sort of hides it away there but if you don't if you know if you work in a lot of small windows and you don't want to have to drag the the cursor up to the top left every time you want to access a menu uh, and you can access also you can also access the menu of various different applications even if they are not um, selected and or in focus. So that's not too bad. I'm going to stick it in the uh, in the default settings there. So um, yeah, like when it comes to like the general user interface and whatnot of the Unity desktop, it's by no means my favorite. Like I, I like the Mate desktop better. I like XFCE better. I like GNOME better. I like KDE slash Plasma better. I probably like even the more lightweight ones better. So this is certainly among my lesser favorite desktop environments. In no small part because they it, it it's not readily available on other distributions. Now I don't know if that's down to other distributions or how Unity is packaged or whether or not of course other distributions even want to bother with it. If there isn't any, you know, I mean there's certainly no enthusiasm for the Unity desktop from, from my end. You know, like I, I, I get that it does a job. I get that it expresses sort of canonical and Ubuntu's identity in a in a specific way. And I think a lot of the the desktop UI is is part of the Ubuntu branding, which is why they've 
they sort of stuck with the Unity desktop. But for all its faults, it's still something that I um, that that is is workable, is usable, is professional. I guess um, there are a few little things about it that I that I'm not too fond of. Like for example, this thing's always bugged me, and I don't know if it's just me, but whenever you've maximized a window, there's a very small gap between the panel on the left and the maximized window. You can see it all the way down there, and that is a gap. Like if there are windows that sort of slide across the the, the breach it there. You can sort of see them if you're very careful. I don't know if you, YouTube compression is going to knock that out. And it's a purely cosmetic thing about an infinitesimally small uh, minute thing. But for some reason it's been in there for the past few releases and it's just annoyed me. And I don't know if it's there on purpose or whatever. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, uh, but you know, other than that, it's fine. Like, I think other desktop environments have just done a lot of this stuff better, but it's not like this is, uh, you know, this is this is particularly bad I guess uh, especially once sort of you know I, I find that most des desktop environments they generally all become somewhat usable after a few weeks of just getting used to how you know getting used to the workflow flow getting used to how the windows are managed and all that kind of stuff all the, all the little nuances of any desktop environment once you get used to those and that you know takes a couple of weeks you're pretty pretty much good to go and you're pretty comfortable working in whatever desktop environment you sort of find yourself landed on and for people that that aren't super into computers but have you know ended up on linux for one reason or another and they found themselves on the most popular and well-known distribution ubuntu with the unity desktop you know that's fine that's fine you know i i i can sort of stand by with pride as that happens i guess with the uh you know as part of the linux community there uh not my personal choice but one of the great things about ubuntu is that it is incredibly easy to um to change the things you like while keeping the things you do so that's all well and good so uh qt applications look good uh f the usability for the most part seems fine seems good um there aren't huge uh, improvements over previous releases with this one uh, the biggest change I think would probably be the snap file over the snap partition um, one thing that I will what, one criticism that I will give just before I finish the video is how they've implemented snaps in the Ubuntu software center the Ubuntu software center is all right they haven't included um, any of the other package managers here so they expect you to do everything through the Ubuntu store you can of course still do stuff through the command line which is where I sort of instinctively go um, and I do quite like using apt. I quite like using Pac-Man. Um, I know that a lot of people have sort of one strong preference for one over the other, but I've, I find them both to be usable and fine and great. This does take a little while to load up. It's still fine. It's still good. However, I do not like how it does snaps. It, 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 there, has, there have been no introduction to, uh, to snaps to me. Introduce me to snaps, as it were since I installed and started playing around with with this Ubuntu image. I, you know, no one or no application has told me what a snap is, why I should care, and what it does, even. But um, my first introduction to it was when I was trying to install KeyPassX, and there are a few applications that do this, right? So KeyPassX, Password Manager, uh, I swear by it, and it's a great piece of kit. Um, so you've got KeyPass here, and as you can see, this is installed. So I clicked on that, I clicked Install, it went through fine. However, there are two other key pass things which you're not sure of. Now, most notably this one that has the same icon and still a very similar description here. So if I wanted to go and install that, this would then suddenly now ask me to authenticate. To continue, you need to sign into Snap Store. Now, this is the first time I've ever heard of a Snap Store. Do I have an account? Do I want an account? Was an account entail? So if I go, well, I want to register for an account now. You have to type in an email address, so I'll just do test it. That's the t like the the bogus email I use for everything. Is I wonder if there is someone at test at test dot com that just gets so many of these emails. Uh, okay, so yeah, and you, you and then it cracks open a web browser and then just tells you to to upgrade. It doesn't tell you why you need to do it or all this kind of stuff. And and it it fe that feels genuinely to me that feels broken that feels like that you should have been prepared for this um it should it should be in some kind of help file somewhere it should be in a in a welcome screen the only welcome screen that i got was the keyboard shortcut well welcome screen which kind of is all right but for the most part kind of useless because once you've gotten rid of it you're not going to memorize all of those keyboard um shortcuts there and then and then once it's gone i mean you could probably can i can i find it here uh, is there an Ubuntu welcome, maybe? 
Hmm. See, this is something that Ubuntu Mate have done infinitely better, is the introductions, in the introductions into a system. So that, to me, is a particularly big gripe that they haven't given... They've given very little explanation as to what snaps are um, to the end user, while at the same time putting them in the direct firing line of of what you know of a new user. Now, most new users could probably you know wrangle out how to use the, to register and whatnot, but it doesn't sound great. You know, it 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 does have this ring of windows to it where you have to sign into an app store or sign into a software center, which is basically the same thing. Um, in order to download new software, like that, that to me is something that that I I do not like. And there are obviously ways around it. You can use the 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 command line. You can use Synaptic. You can even install the the other package. You know, because it'll list two package. But it doesn't list the distinction between the two packages. It doesn't list that one is a snap and one isn't. All that kind of stuff. So that really does. That is the biggest criticism of of, of today for Ubuntu. Is it hasn't. It doesn't seem to to have a particularly good end user experience for for snap packages now i really like to see snap come along i I like to see any sort of like universal um you know universal packages packages that work cross distro um come about but um but there are good ways of doing it and bad ways doing it and i think that the technical stuff aside if i was a new user and i came across that that process then I, i i would be deterred that would be that certainly would be a mark against it if you asked me uh, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below, and let me know how you get on with Unity. Like, I've never really liked it, and my overall review of it now would be passable. It's fine. It's, it does the job. But the first opportunity I would get, I would switch it out for something else. I, I just think that it's it's okay for, for, for new users. Like, it has a striking identity. It doesn't look too much like Windows and all that kind of stuff, so... So anyway, yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments section below. And um, that's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.